Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Paul's United Methodist Church, where we have been making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world since 1824. We are a mission-oriented family serving God and community in the Wesleyan tradition for 199 years. During this time of worship, it is our hope that you will feel the presence of God with you as the word is shared through prayer, music, and message. We are grateful for your presence and invite you to participate in worship, small group study, community, and mission of this church family. During this time with us, may you experience grace. We also want to welcome those following us on Facebook and listening to us on the radio. Today's broadcast on WMSG 1050 AM and WKTZ 95.9 FM is underwritten by Brenda Beckman in memory of Reed King. So thank you, Brenda. A uh, few announcements, most of them you'll see on the screens uh, at the beginning of the service and we'll run again at the end. we will touch on a few. Um, worship time, so we have another service this evening at 7 p.m. Please join us this evening. Um, next Sunday, the 31st, the New Year's Eve service, we'll have one service like today. That will be 9.30 in the morning. Um, also important uh, donations and offerings, tithings are important to the mission and ministry of this church. We have several ways to give. We have an offering plate in the narthex, and then you can also go on the website, which is www.stpaulsumcoakland.com, where you can give uh, electronically if you're a techie type of person through, uh, with your wirelessly through uh, a credit card or savings or checking account. Any other announcements this morning? Okay. Yes, Sue. That's excellent. Yeah, thanks everyone. That's great. Let us prepare our hearts for worship as Kendra leads us in our prelude.
Thank you, Kendra. As we come into the presence of God, we know that there are many things that distract us from our worship. May we place these to the side as we sing together, O come, O come, Emmanuel. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, as we wait for the coming of God, we light the candle of love. As we worship on this final Sunday of Advent, we are filled with wonder, for Christmas is almost here. We wonder if God comes to the edge of heaven, laughing with delight, as the angels begin to practice their alleluias. We wonder if they are full of expectancy and hope that this year, when they announce the birth of God's love to those who have hearts to receive, the earth will fall to its knees in a whisper of peace. As we worship, we wonder. Please stand and sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Please remain standing and join responsively in the call to worship. All creation holds its breath. The time is almost here. The heavenly choir of angels waits for its cue to sing. The excitement is all around us. Prepare your hearts. The grace of God takes on human form. Good news, Emmanuel, God with us, comes to us. We gather to make ready our hearts. For the coming of Christ, our love. Come, let us worship.
The love of Emmanuel, God with us, be with you. may be seated. In all the hustle and bustle of the season, we take time to encounter God in the quiet of worship, to listen for the ways in which God is present to us, remaking us into vessels of reconciling love. Reaching out to God with our hearts and minds, let us join together in prayer. Advent God, we journey with you to Bethlehem's stable and the newborn king. Attuned to the song of angels, alert for Bethlehem's star. Forgive us if on our journey we are distracted by tempting offers that draw our minds from you. Forgive us when we fail to be open to your message and your messengers, when we fail to see your angels in our midst bringing us love. Keep our hearts aflame with the love of Christmas and the promise of a Savior. Amen. Having confessed our sin, we are assured of God's love for us. Let us sing together the beautiful word of grace. Verse 3 of Silent Night, Holy Night. As we continue in prayer, you are invited to share aloud any joys and concerns that are on your hearts. Do we have any joys and concerns, Betty? Yes? Betty? I'm sorry. Oh, it's uh, Sharon's birthday today. Oh. oh. Happy birthday to Sharon. <laughs> any others? Ann? Uh, Gina Thomas over Facebook is saying that her mom, Maureen Stewart, and she Um, they miss uh, her father because it's Christmas. And there are, I'm sure, lots of us having something of a blue Christmas, thinking of loved ones who are not in Christmas. Thank you. Any other joys and concerns? Yes, Ann? Uh, here's from Mark. From? Oh, no, okay. Gap. Mark. Safe travels and fellowship. Yes. Okay. Any others today? Let's go to the Lord. Incarnate God, born in a major in Bethlehem, so that we may see you up close and personal, we offer you our petitions, spoken and unspoken, for ourselves and others, for the church and for the world. Grant us an awareness of your abiding presence with us in the very neighborhoods in which we live, and help us to listen to your responses and possibilities. Lord, we are, celebrate the joy of birthdays and sharing and the joy of fellowship and going home and being with family. And we're, we take comfort in the assurance that you are lifting up everyone, you're with everyone who is missing family and loved ones that can't be with us in this time of year. We lift up Mark, who is dealing with gout. Thank you, Lord, for being with all of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank <laughs> you.
As we continue in prayer, let us pray the prayer in which Jesus shares of a new kingdom where God's will is being done. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we end this time of praying together in community, let's sing together, Love Came Down at Christmas. Now, if the children would like to come forward, we'll have a Jesus loves me moment. Good morning. How are, how is everybody this morning? Good? We're getting excited? Yeah? I don't know. Depending on how early people wake up, we, we have probably no more than 24 hours, right? For tomorrow, we're opening presents and spending time with family and enjoying fellowship, right? You already did. Wow. <laughs> Are you going to have a part two? No, no part two. Gotcha. Well, I'm glad that you're here from, from which part of Carolina? Oh, wow. Well, I got the whole address. That's awesome. Well, thank you. That's a long travel. We're glad that you're here. What's that? Eight hours. Yeah, that's, yeah that sounds right. So, um, guys, have you, have you ever been faced with a, a tough decision? Yeah, tough decision. And maybe you need instructions or directions on what to do. You know, who do you, uh, who do you turn to? Mom and dad. Mom and dad, yeah, mom and dad, that's a good one. How about you? Mom and dad, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we can, depending on what it is, maybe it's instructions, we can go to YouTube or, you know, Google or whatever. Mom and dad are great ones, though. That's like the first place to start. So, do you, um, do you recall that last week um, in the message we talked about Mary, right? And Mary had a visit from the angel. And the angel explained God's plan and um, didn't promise it was going to be easy, as we remember, right? But that Mary was going to have a baby and that, you know, it was, it was going to be a tough road. No easy promises, correct? Let's talk about uh, today's message. Today we're going to hear about Joseph. And Joseph is engaged to be married to Mary and he finds out that she's having a baby. Uh, can you imagine what he's thinking right now? They're engaged. I don't. You don't? <laughs> so, I mean, this is something that, yeah, he's probably freaking out, right? Yeah, but I bet you he is, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is something that goes against science, that this, you know, particularly probably in this time of, of uh, the world. Um, this was something that was socially really kind of looked down upon. So, you know, I'm sure at this moment, you know, he is thinking to himself, what do I do, right, at the very least? And one question we know he can't ask is, what would Jesus do? That question hasn't been invented yet, right? We've got a few years for that. So can't go to Google either. But, he, uh, you know, he's a good man, and he realizes that he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to embarrass Mary right publicly so he decides that he's going to break off the engagement in in private and as he's considering this he has a visit from an angel 
in the dream. An angel says, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child inside her was conceived of the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, and he will save people from their sins. So when the angel of the Lord had spoken and made God's plan clear, Joseph was obedient. He didn't have to understand how all this was going to happen, and he didn't need to worry what others would think. He just trusted God. So that's, that's pretty brave, isn't it, right? So, and earlier in the service, um, we joined in a prayer, and, a, and the last line was, keep our hearts aflame with the love of Christmas and the promise of a Savior. Boy, that was Joseph, wasn't it? I mean, he got that from the angel. He got the promise of a Savior. That's what the, that's what the angel told him. You know, and I think that this line is, probably wasn't written for Joseph, but probably inspired by that interaction with Joseph and the angel. Would you guys agree? Yeah? Okay. You don't agree? <laughs> What's your thoughts? She don't, you don't have any? So, so, when we're going through situations that we don't know what to do, like Joseph, we need to listen to what God tells us, and we need to trust in God. And we have a Bible for this. Right? We can listen to God's word in the Bible. We have worship and we have prayer. And although I'm not going to claim to have seen an angel come to me with wings and a halo, I know that angels have spoken to me through my friends and through family members. And we just have to be open to hear the message, right, that God wants us to hear. And I'm sure that there's a lot of messages that I've missed. I'm glad Joseph didn't miss his message. So let us pray. Lord, keep us open to your message and your messengers that we will not fail to see your angels in our midst, bringing us love. Keep our hearts aflame with the love of Christmas and the promise of a Savior. Amen. Thank you, guys. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Today's sacred reading comes from the first chapter of Matthew, and we will be doing verses 18 through 25. Um, They will be broken into a couple of segments, and they'll be interspersed with a song that will be to the tune of Good King Wenceslas, if anybody knows what that is. And I invite you to read the parts that are in bold. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said, All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So with these words in mind, let's sing together the carol, Joseph Heard the Troubling News. Thank you. 
did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife and did not know her till her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. This is a witness to the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? Loving God, as we wait, watch, hope, and long once again for the miracle of the birth of your son, may our hearts be attuned to the voice of your angel who brings your good news to us. Now may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God of all that is and is to come. Amen. So if you want to love, you must begin by loving. If there is one message of the angel on this fourth Sunday of Advent as we make our final preparations for Christmas, it is this one, expressed by Catherine of Siena, a mystic of the Christian church in the 1400s. If you want to love, you must begin by loving. Now today, we have heard from the angels of hope, peace, and joy, all of which have had a twist or two in their messages inviting us into a different aspect of God's character, of the divine's nature. And today's message of the Advent Angel of Love is not without its own surprises, its own twists and turns. And the ancient voice of Catherine of Siena hints at this. If you want to love, you must begin by loving. While we can treat the sacred stories of Christmas as old hat, if we have heard them before, or if you are like me, you have listened to them over your lifetime, if we keep our hearts open, there will be a moment when we discover a novel twist or turn or character which reveals something fresh to us about the experience, about this story which began over 2,000 years ago. It doesn't matter that our preparations for Christmas often diverge very little from the first time we made them. Oh, we may have become more elaborate or less in our planning, decorating, baking, cooking, and other traditions, but many of us still have customs that we keep that are specific to our families and our church families. From the earliest Christmas preparations in our family home, which I hold dearly in my memory and still use some of these today, my dad made fudge, hard candy, peanut brittle, caramel popcorn, or minty popcorn balls. And my mom made homemade eggnog, prohibition style, an abundance of Christmas cookies using the Betty Crocker cookie cookbook. And then she made fruit cake, which was mostly for my dad because it definitely would not have been on the list of me or my sisters. And my mom and dad then always decorated their tree and their home in a certain fashion. Some of you may remember when those old shiny silver icicles were in style. There was always a debate between my parents, and I bet there was in your house if you used them. For my dad wanted to put them on the branches one by one, while my mother would just toss them at the branches and enjoy wherever they fell. As we neared Christmas in 2016, which was after my mother's death in March, our family wondered what my dad would do that year without my mother's help in the preparations, because it had always been something that they did together. But he kept up the traditions that they had practiced over their marriage with a twist or two. No longer did we have that full sit-down meal which had always been prepared by our parents with a little help from us. But instead, we had a table of appetizers, salads, cookies, pies, cobbler, prepared by all our families. All these graced the Christmas table. Now, as you can imagine, the first Christmas without my mother was bittersweet. But we knew that if we wanted to love each other, 
We had to begin by loving anew, by letting our collective story take shape in fresh ways. Not rewriting it all, but accepting a twist or two so that the joy would rise out of the bittersweet. Our celebration of Christmas is rapidly approaching. Tonight at Christmas Eve worship, we will sing joy to the world, announcing with the angels the birth of a savior for us, for all the people. So are we ready for it? Are we ready to sing, let every heart prepare him room and mean it? That is, are we ready to begin loving anew with the kind of patient, sheltering, protecting, guiding, healing, sacrificial, forgiving love which came from heaven to earth that first Christmas? Are we ready to receive and extend the sort of love that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and never ends? Are we ready? Are we ready to receive God's Christmas gift, that gift of abundant life, wrapped up in the swaddling claws of a love that will not let us go, no matter what? There's a story told of two friends who were walking through the desert, and they got into an argument. And one friend slapped the other on the face. And the one who got slapped was hurt, but without saying anything, wrote in the sand, Today, my best friend slapped me in the face. The two friends kept walking until they found an oasis. And thirsty, they stopped for water. And the one who was slapped got stuck in the mire, fell in, started to drown. And the friend saved him. And that night, he wrote on a stone, Today, my best friend saved my life. The friend who had slapped him and then saved him asked, after I hurt you, you wrote in the sand, yet now you write on a stone. Why? The friend who had been harmed replied, when someone hurts us, we should write it in the sand where the winds of forgiveness can erase it away. But when someone does something good and kind for us, we must engrave it in stone where it will be long remembered. If you want to love, you must begin by loving. Are you ready for Christmas? And all the preparations you've made, have you made room in your heart for God's word of forgiving love, again, that comes to us from heaven to earth at Christmas, to live among us? Have you cleaned out the cobwebs of regret and remorse? Have you swept all the grudges and hurts and disappointments out of the corners of your heart? Have you cleared out anger and loss and fear. Are these written in sand or in stone? Have you made room for this wondrous gift? You know, are you ready for Christmas? A Christmas filled with sacred and contemporary stories that tell us in the most profound ways that if you want to love, you must begin by loving. Today's sacred story from Matthew's Gospel is an effort to help us do so. As we've been hearing throughout the season of preparation for the celebration of the coming of the Christ child to live among us full of grace and truth, one of the most ancient forms of biblical communication is the voice of an angel, this member of the heavenly court. When something extraordinary was going to happen to ordinary people, an angel appeared and spoke the good news. When human beings were tossing and turning, unable to sleep because they were in the midst of what my mother-in-law would have called a sticky wicket, the appearance of an angel was not uncommon, laying out options. And for the record, my guess is that we still have these angel visitations, as Harry was saying as well, through the wonderful power of God's Spirit, yet often we dismiss these as just our conscience, our intuition, which means a lot of times that we feel like we generate these. And yet a Google search of angel communication will tell you that human beings today still want to believe in divine messages or announcements. I did a search the other day and I found over 93 million results. And there were well over a billion and a half resorts, results for the classic It's a Wonderful Life, which offers this whimsical depiction of heavenly angels who look after people on earth. I'm going to start by saying that every December, it's one of the first movies that Mark and I watch. 
Here's a synopsis of it if for some reason you've never seen it. And it's a wonderful life. A man named George Bailey has watched as his life's hopes and dreams are shattered right before him. And consequently, he has lost sight of the value of family and friendships and faith. And when something terrible happens at the business he runs, things quickly go downhill. And as the books at his building alone are being audited and his Uncle Billy loses a large deposit that his family business really needs, It proves to be the last straw for this good man named George Bailey, who only ended up working there due to unfortunate circumstances. Well, after a fruitless search for the deposit and in desperation shouting at his uncle that his careless handling of the deposit means bankruptcy and scandal in prison, hanging on to his sanity by a thread, George goes to see the local banker, an arch enemy named Potter, for a loan only to find him totally unsympathetic. Potter takes great pleasure in accusing George of mishandling the building and loan money. And when George suggests that he has a $15,000 life insurance policy that he can use as collateral, the banker carelessly tells him, you're worth more dead than alive. Well, his words set off all the ugly feelings which George has about his life. And he comes to the warped conclusion that Potter may be right. And just as he is about to jump into the icy river, into his life comes Clarence, angel second class. This divine intervention is the result of the angels in heaven receiving prayers such as this one from George's child. Please, God, something's the matter with Daddy. As soon as the angels hear the prayers... They decide that the down-on-his-luck angel Clarence, who still needs to earn his wings, is the best angel to go to earth and help George Bailey out of the sticky wicket in which he is in. Clarence is to show him what a wonderful life he has had and to guide him to begin anew by loving, to make room in his heart once again for his family and for his community. This is despite the fact that The dreams George Bailey had dreamed for his life have not been realized, not in the way that he had hoped, and to enable him to find the hope, the peace, the joy in what he does have, in the life that he has made with his family and the people in his community. In today's sacred story, Joseph, who is called righteous, finds himself in his own sticky wicket. Mary, the young woman to whom he is formally engaged through a legally binding ceremony, has just told him that he is with child through the power of God's spirit. She's going to have a baby. And even though Mary had told Joseph about the angel Gabriel's announcement to her, her story has too many twists and turns for Joseph to really believe its veracity. Feeling betrayed and disgraced by what he believes to be Mary's infidelity, A heartbroken Joseph considers how to quietly break off their engagement. Now, it's not an easy thing for him to do because of the commitment that he's made to Mary and because of the feelings he has for her. And he knows that as Mary's pregnancy begins to show, well-meaning people and those not so well-meaning will begin to ask questions. And if they assume it is Joseph's child, then they'll be unhappy with him, and he will be at the mercy of whatever Mary's father requires of him. But if they assume that Mary is pregnant with another man's child, there will be a call for her to be stoned to death. It is definitely a tricky situation that Joseph finds himself in, with twists and turns that he never imagined. Finally, wanting to do the right thing towards Mary... Joseph decides to break off the engagement without any public fuss because that's the sort of godly man that he is. And it's in this moment that God intervenes. God intervenes with an angel visitation from the very same angel who visited Mary. And the purpose of this heavenly messenger is to lay out another option. Gabriel tells Joseph that he is to join Mary and making room in their hearts for a baby who he will name Jesus, the one who will be love in the flesh, who will restore all creation to its fullness as it was in the Garden of Eden, the one who will bring hope, peace, and joy to all the world.
So are you ready for Christmas, Joseph? To begin by loving Mary, who is carrying the Son of the Most High. Are you ready to offer Mary a forgiving, healing love, which will create the space within you to receive God's greatest gift, born in a stable? Are you ready to begin by loving her little baby, who will be Emmanuel, God with us, the Savior of the world? Are you ready for Christmas, Joseph? Asked the angel Gabriel. If you want to love, you must begin by loving. For you, Joseph, will be an example of how God's love does not stay at a distance from the world that God brought into existence. Oh, it refuses to do so. But instead, this love is designed to live in the very neighborhoods where you and Mary and all creation dwells. Well, Joseph heard the voice of the angel sent from God telling him that he was to stay with Mary and become this earthly father to Jesus. And he listened. He made the needed preparations, taking Mary as his wife, together making that week-long trip in the final weeks of her pregnancy from their hometown of Nazareth to the town of Bethlehem to be counted in a census commanded by the government. Now, unfortunately for them, there was no room in the inn in Bethlehem, we're told. So one tradition says that in the spirit of hospitality and empathy, the innkeeper's wife had the innkeeper give them a place in a nearby stable with a manger and fresh hay to keep them warm because she took pity on them. It's intriguing that it is at this point in the Christian church in our preparations for Christmas that we finally highlight love, and that it is in relationship to Joseph, the one who poet Ann Weems suggests we typically hide in the back of the stable, forgetting that he is only there in the first place because he acts out of love towards Mary and the baby that she's carrying. In her poem, Weems writes this, who put Joseph in the back of the stable? Who dressed him in brown, put a staff in his hand, and told him to stand in the back of the creche, background for the magnificent light of the Madonna? I'd say not the writer of today's sacred story of Matthew, that's for sure. As you can hear, he wanted us all to know that Joseph has a significant role in the telling and the retelling of the Christmas story, that he has a significant role in teaching us that if we want to love, as God calls us to love, we must begin by loving. As we make our final preparations for Christmas, for receiving this Christ child into our hearts, either for the first time or once again, I'm going to invite you to make a list. And yeah, check it twice. For any regrets, hurts, grudges, disappointments, anger, loss, or feelings of remorse that you are holding on to ever so tightly in your hearts. And if you find any or all of these written on your list, ask yourself this question. Are they written in sand or in stone? If they are written in stone and are keeping you from beginning to love as the angel of God called Joseph and thus us to do, I'm going to encourage you to pray the prayer composed by Philip Brooks and allow these words to help you to make room in your heart for receiving and offering God's gift of forgiving love that comes to us this Christmas. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. This Christmas, in the words of Anne Weems from her poem, Getting to the Front of the Stable, let's give thanks to God for this man, Joseph, of incredible faith, in whose care God placed the Christ child. And as a gesture of gratitude of how we are called to love, let's put Joseph in the front of the stable, where he can guard and greet and cast an occasional glance at this child who brought us life and love. Amen.
with these words in mind, let's stand and sing together, Sing We Now of Christmas, because we're getting close, folks. go forth in peace and as you do I encourage you to carry the message of the Advent Angel of Love if you want to love you must begin by loving now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever amen
The preceding presentation came from St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Oakland, Maryland.